There should be three distinct layers in the shop. Oh, the final part of the inheritance and selection module is reproductive success. Um, this is based on the fact that all organisms produce more offspring than can be supported, however the population must remain constant, which means there's competition but inside a species, intraspecific competition. Um, and there's also a wide variety of alleles in the gene pool. Now this brings me to a point of natural selection, which is also known as evolution, a theory brought up by Charles Darwin. And the way this works is that some individuals can possess a combination of alleles which gives an advantage over other species. So in this example of audio media formats, the CD has an advantage over the cassette tape in that you can tra you can support more songs on an easy to play format, you can choose which song to play. Now this means that the CD is more adapted to its running. In the animal kingdom, this animal would be better suited for finding food, growing quickly, or more easily able to attract a mate, which means they live longer, or that they breed more successfully. Both of the outcomes are that they breed more successfully, which means that alleles that these animals pass, these animals have are more likely to be passed on, so the frequency of these advantageous alleles increase, while non-advantageous alleles decline which is why we don't see many cassette tapes anymore. Or for that matter, CDs are going on as well, it's mostly iPods nowadays. So these non-advantageous alleles decline, which means that advantageous alleles are more common. This is how evolution works, so this is the evolution of the audio format. Um, it should be noted that advantageous depends on the conditions at the time. So the conditions at the time for these audio formats is that we wanted more tracks, smaller place really, and in the animal kingdom it might be just better suited to a cold environment. There are two main types of selection, directional selection and stabilizing selection. The first type is directional selection, as you can see from the header. Um, directional selection favors individuals that vary in one direction from the mean of a population. For example, if it was fur length in a cold place, the animal with the longer fur, but not too long, would be the favourite. So this is the optimum here. So this is the optimum and this is the mean. So the optimum is next to the mean. It differs from the mean. So by directional selection, the mean moves over to the optimum, such as this. This is because the frequency of the optimum allele increases, as I've just explained, and the non-advantageous non mean decreases. Stabilizing selection is the second type of selection, which is when selection favors average individuals, so the characteristics of species are conserved. So the way this worked is we have advantageous alleles here in the center, the averages, and non-advantageous on the side here. So what happens is that the curve moves inwards, it becomes steep, it becomes taller and steeper so that all the individuals are within the advantageous zone. So this is stabilizing selection, so all the members of the species become advantageous. Speciation is the formation of a new species from an existing one. A species is a group of individuals that share similar genes and can reproduce to produce fertile offspring. One of the reasons speciation may occur is geographical isolation. So if geographical isolation occurs on this, this pond of orange dots, these two communities, there are now two communities of our, two populations of orange dots living in different environments. Now because they live in different environments they possess different selection pressures. Now bear in mind that these are both two separate gene pools now anyway. One, these contain a certain number of genes and these contain a certain number of genes and they cannot interbreed with each other because of the geographical isolation. So because they face selection pressures they begin to evolve which is when, as I explained in the previous video, mutations arise that are advantageous and these are more likely to get passed on. So if, say, the selection pressure in this pond led to green dots, apparently, led to green dots, and this pond led to blue dots, 
Now these are completely new species now because they're completely different from each other. So if the geographical isolation ends and they are allowed to mingle, they will be they'll be completely separate gene pools and completely separate species.